Welcome back, everyone. This is Thomas Triple T Tile with another new bullish crypto analysis. Before we dig in and take a look at Bitcoin's daily analysis, remember this is for edutainment only and not to be considered as financial advice. Additionally, I would appreciate it if you could help spread my analysis out to others, especially newbies, uh, so they can get easy to understand analysis and stay informed uh, and make uh, better decisions. This um, and you can do that by smashing uh, the like, ringing my bell, and hit, and hit and subscribe if you haven't, and share your thoughts in the comment section. Let's dig into the uh, news, and then we'll dive into the uh, charts. According to uh, the daily hodl, extreme hodling could completely destroy Bitcoin BTC, according to ex Bitfinex CEO Arthur Hayes. And I pose this question on Twitter and see what your thoughts are. And um, I appreciate you responding. But basically what, um, and this is, he's not the first one uh, to, to ask this question or to propose this, but Bitcoin's uh, 21 million uh, supply is uh, predicted to be um, fully mined around 2140, uh, I believe. The question is, once, oh, as you know, miners make money by mining uh, Bitcoin and solving the uh, uh, the the mathematical um, puzzle, if you will. And so they get paid by Bitcoin, and they use Bitcoin to pay off their expenses with some leftover money. So what happens if all 21 million Bitcoins have been mined? Then the miners would only get paid through... Uh, fees, transaction fees. Now, if everyone held Bitcoin, um, meaning they're not going to sell it, they're going to hold it for a long, long time, thinking the price is going to go many uh, times more, then there won't be any transactions on the, uh, on the on Bitcoin's blockchain. Therefore, there won't be any transaction fees to be collected by the miners. If the miners are not going to make money, why would they uh, keep their operations open? That's the question. So, uh, hodling in the long run could potentially be detrimental to the um, the Bitcoin blockchain unless they come up with some kind of new fee structure for the miners to uh, stick around. This one is uh, this article is from Kitco, and it's uh, labeled "We have a problem. Bitcoin gold stock will all crash soon." Nothing will work, <laughs> warns economist Alfonso uh, Pecatiello. Uh, so, well, we are somewhat in a crash. Um, we've been in the crash for quite some time, correction. And um, I, in my opinion, I've stood by this for a long time, especially with my uh, low entry levels. Um, yeah, we're going to crash some more. It, a lot of, some people have predicted we're going to go up to 100,000 for Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. But, no, I, I still think we can. We haven't found the bottom yet, and uh, I've mentioned that for months now. So um, yeah, I agree with this, mm, and I think we're in a correction right now. We're in a crash, but we can crash further. According to uh, according to Coin Telegraph, DeFi is not decentralized at all. Says former Blockstream executive. Basically, what he's saying here is that. Since the DeFi platform or companies can, you know, make any changes they want to their blockchain, therefore, it's more centralized than it's de uh, decentralized. And I completely agree with him. And what uh, he's saying here is that um, Bitcoin, on the other hand, is more decentralized. And I agree with that. However, I disagree with the fact that DeFi uh, is not decentralized. There are ways we can make it more decentralized. And so, um, not fully agreeing with uh, with him. Let's take a look at the uh, charts here. Um, crypto market heat map, still blood red. Uh, Ape finally um, came crashing down um, more than fifty percent of uh, its uh, recent high, all time high. So, it was a matter of time, but it was too risky to short, so I didn't do it. Um, Bitcoin 38.6 down 2.81, dominance uh, 41.87, Ethereum 2.8k down 4.03, dominance 19.36, and 
and Luna's in the mid 80s now. So let's go to uh, the uh, crypto market market cap. And you can see here um, 1.76 down 3.28, um, 1.76 trillion that is. And you can see Bitcoin here, um, 735.5 uh, uh, billion dollars. Quick glance down here. And here we have the um, daily charts on trading view for Bitcoin. This candle here, this whitish can uh, white candle here, just printed. So um, I'm going to ignore that for a second. I'm going to deal with, I'm going to work with this uh, tall body bearish candle here. So but yesterday's analysis mentioned that BTC uh, is likely to chop between 38K and uh, 40.4K. 38K is this, uh, the predicted right here, this um, lower low trend line here, yellow dashed line. And the 40.4K uh, is this um, ascending uh, trend line, this other one. And they form like somewhat a, a megaphone type pattern. So it came close. It was within that range. It um, put in a high of, um, That's not forty. It's not forty nine forty. <laughs> Let's see here. Typo there. Yeah, it put in a. Uh, that's not even true. It's more. I think it was thirty nine. I can't see it with this bright light and dark text. Yeah, thirty nine nine, not forty. in a typo with more typos here so it came close um, so it came in at a high of 39 um, a 39 point no is that right so confusing here no that's right yeah, it came in at 39.9 uh, and uh, for the high and a low of um, 38.2. So pretty close, you know, pretty close within that range. And it's, uh, it printed this um, bearish big body, um, well, somewhat middle, middle, somewhat big uh, body uh, bearish candle here. Uh, the wick came down to the Bollinger bottom band here. And the Bollinger bottom band is roughly around 38.1K. I'll make it 38.2K. Um, but it didn't break below that. And uh, it didn't break above the, the ascending trend line here. Yellowish, yellowish line here. Currently, it's still um, below the um, middle basis line. And in the past, uh, it can remain the um, below the middle basis line for... Uh, 12 to 38 days is on the it's 24th day and also uh, previously I mentioned that this area right in here where this mouse cursor is uh, is an uh, it's an area of confluence so we got the Bollinger basis dropping down we got the 23.6 uh, fib level which is right where that red line is right here and then we got we have the um, uh, also the ascending trend line here so that's a major fib level it did not break through that so um, it remains bearish underneath and it's beneath the bull um, market support band gray ribbon here and uh, below the 50-day moving average up here and the bull market support band is roughly uh, around 42.3 to 43.2 in this area here and the 50 uh, 50 day moving average is uh, roughly 41.9 make it 42k uh, see what else um, let's go down to the uh, the volume where it's trading ex right right now literally right now is the highest volume level uh, price zone so you can see this reddish line that goes all the way across and this bar on the side bar graph on the side sp uh, spiking out here that's the highest volume 
for that uh, for for various price zone, highest volume traded price zone. Um, down below we have the uh, daily volume just be uh, fa falling behind. I mean below the uh, moving average here after four days of being above the um, the KDJ here. It you can see that it bounced. It went up slightly penetrated through the uh, uh, the uh, blue K and the red D line and then bounced right back down and uh, and then it flipped back up again with this current uh, new candle here so it's mostly choppy here so it it registered at 24 I gave it a bear uh, but right now it's bouncing back up so more like a bear and a crab if you will uh, we'll see what happens because it seems like it can't break above the uh, the red line. I think I should change that too. Let's do that. No, nope, that didn't work. Let's put a copy of the crab here. So if you look at the overall trend of the red line that it can't seem to penetrate, it's a downward movement. So we'll just give it a crab and a bear. For the um, white MAC uh, D line, it's registering at negative 967 when I prepared this chart. And it continues uh, a downward trend, the white line, below the uh, red signal line there. Uh, for the 25th consecutive bearish bar, but the uh, the latter half here very thin and very short so I gave that a bear there for the uh, uh, red RSI the blue CVD and the white mom momentum indicator they all flipped down and then they went horizontal and the red RSI is at 41 and I, uh, 41 just below the middle 50 mark so it's got some ways to bounce up and down if it wants to uh, I gave that a bear and a crab the blue CVD line here, uh, it's registering at 1.812 million uh, for a bear and a crab. The uh, white momentum uh, indicator right here, it flipped down to uh, negative 2,728 for a bear and a crab also. So uh, in summary, what do I think is going to happen um, more than likely? Uh, it's going to crab sideways. Um, Here's the summary here. Intraday, intraday BTC is likely to continue to chop between the lower uh, descending um, uh, level here and the lower lower descending level and the uh, um, and the uh, ascending support resistance for the uh, channel and the uh, triangle here. So it's going to chop between there. More than likely, it's going to hang on the lower end with uh, bearish pressure. That's why I gave it two crabs and a bear here. So. Um, it's, I don't think it's going to touch uh, wick above, um, but it could wick below, I think, more than likely. Uh, but if it does break above, that's very bullish. Um, but if it breaks below, that's uh, sustain a break below. That's more bearish. Look at that white candle just turn uh, red here, the new one. So, yeah, that's where we, uh, we're gonna, it's going to be. Um, basically, the range would be um, 37.9 and uh, let's see here. 40.5 so roughly around there uh, again more towards the lower end let's take a look at some um, charts here options max pain uh, it's roughly going to be ranging between 39 and 40 um, so may this whoa well oh, this is out of order may the 1st is right here uh, April the 30th <laughs> sorry it's messed up but uh, the 30th, uh, 39, May the 6th will be uh, 40, uh, May the 1st will be 39. So it go 39, 39, 40, and uh, 40 for May, th uh, May the uh, 13th. And the days that we want to pay attention to, volume uh, are contracts that have been filled already. You can see here May the 6th got a pretty high volume here compared to its peers. Uh, and over here, open interest are contracts that are not yet filled, um, pretty low. So I wouldn't pay attention much to the uh, open interest 
uh, I mean, uh, to the max paying because um, that's not a, enough open interest um, pending to make a difference. Here's the uh, heat map, a zoomed in view. We uh, can see that there's there are various cell walls up close by the price line here. And these look like to be spoofing uh, cell walls. You see how they move? They move, move, move as price get near them. And the same thing happens down here on the cell walls, uh, buy walls down here. These are spoofing buy walls. And the reason you see this lar wider one is because these are um, pending. So they elongated. So if I close this in, it'll be shorter. As far as um, cumulative volume delta for aggressive buys and aggressive sells, those are market buys and market sells. Uh, we pretty much have um, a period of mar uh, pretty average here. Zero is pretty average, uh, like neutral. Zero is right about here on the meter. So you get um, almost zero on aggressive buys here, and then it dropped below for aggressive sells here. But ma mainly, it hasn't been aggressive for buys or sells, maintaining pretty much at around zero. Currently just below zero, but still somewhat neutral here. Here's a zoomed out view so you can see major cell walls on top, major sell buy walls on the bottom. The 50 cell wall is still here, not much down below it. Uh, as far as buy walls down below, you can see uh, 36K is coming in uh, bigger right there. 35K is right, uh, it's, uh, getting bigger too. It's more reddish. Um, but notice right below the price line, there's a thick band underneath. Um, that's, you know, that's why it hasn't fallen below. That's pretty good support there. It's pretty thick, much thicker than above it. And then down below 32, it's getting, um, you can see that it's getting bigger here because it was blue, whitish. Now it's turning more warm, yellowish color. 30K is still there, uh, 25K is still there, 20, uh, 20K, it's still there. So more than likely, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if if it breaks down below somewhere uh, around 30, um, 30K here, wick down. Uh, some people are saying that 30, 25. I have entry levels for 25 and I share those, but who knows? Here's the uh, liquidation levels map. Uh, cumulative volume delta, currently negative nine, uh, roughly 960, um, 60, uh, 63, and that's a million. So it's pretty small. I forgot to put million there. But what this um, amount of money means is that you have, these are, the, uh, these are only for 25X to 100X, high leverage, um, high leverage positions. So you have short high leverage positions up on top, long leverage positions on the bottom. You take the amount of money from the shorts, you minus the longs, the difference is $960 million. And it's not a big deal. It's not gonna change any, uh, it's not gonna move or impact or influence the spot market uh, right now. Right now it's all macro, macro factors. And that's it, um, let's see. Entry levels, um, my entry levels, again, for edutainment purposes only, remains as follows. Uh, 37.5, formal level 15% of um, budget. 35K, 20%, 32K, 30%, and that's the sweet spot. Um, I'm sorry, 32K, yeah. 30K, 25%, 25K, 10%, and... Uh, the lower levels have been pretty consistent for, for a long time now. So I hope that was helpful for you. And I need to um, save this before I lose the info. All right. So um, it's my uh, third video for the day. I still have a phantom video. Um, and then uh, trying to make up some videos from yesterday and the day before. So it'll take some time. If not today, I'll... I'll make it up over the weekend. So um, I'll see you in the next video, hopefully later today. I'm a bit tired, but we'll see. All right. Um, please help uh, spread the uh, the analysis to others by smashing the like, ringing my bell, hit it, hit and subscribe, and uh, if you haven't, and share your thoughts in the comment section. Appreciate it. Peace.